this week I've gotten this instrument out for a bit of a play and the reason I've chosen this instrument, this is an instrument ba made by August Denstadt of Multroff in Germany. Um, the main reason I've got this one out is I actually need to play it in a couple of weeks time so I wanted to do some practice but I thought it'd also be quite good to have a little bit of a chat about the vexed issue of what an outhorn is. Now what an out horn or alto horn is can be a little bit confusing and I think we've got the makers of the 19th century partially to blame because they were designing so many instruments and um, things were getting all sorts of names so the nomenclature can be quite confusing. Um, one of the things which is important when discussing these instruments is to help people by saying what key it's in because that helps narrow things down. So this instrument here, this uh, Dainstadt instrument, it's forward facing, um, it's built in F but I can crook it down to E flat and if you look at especially the profile of the bell and also the sort of shape of it, it's not that dissimilar to this instrument here. This is a Courtois alto sax horn. Again, it's built in F, but I can crook it down to E, E flat, D, D flat and C. Um, so this is a sax horn, alto sax horn. Um, just to make things confusing, in the UK we would describe this as a tenor sax horn. So tenor sax horn in E flat for the Brits, alto sax horn in Mi bemol for our friends, friends across the water. Um, and again, just slightly confusing things even further. This instrument this is what I would describe as um, an Eastern European style of basically the same thing. Um, it looks not dissimilar to a Wagner tuba, it's just the bell points in a different uh, way. So this is sometimes described as a tenor horn, sometimes described as an alto horn. I use this if I'm playing um, the Avald quintets, so this is what I'd play for Avald quintets. So these instruments they're basically the same same thing but just um, slightly different designs and the piece of music I chose to play this week is some a piece I really love and it's very rare to hear it being played on an outhorn it's Hindemith's outhorn sonata the opening movement of this outhorn sonata written in 1943 which was sort of slap bang in the middle of Hindemith working his way through, I think, 26 instrumental sonatas. Um, yeah, he was working his way through all the instruments. And one of the delightful things about his outhorn sonata was Hindemith himself owned and played an outhorn. Um, so today, you'd mostly hear the sonata played either on the French horn, and we just transpose it from the original E flat, or on the alto saxophone, but it's rare to hear it played on an althorn. Now, I'm indebted to my dear friend and colleague Uli Hubner, who has had access to Hindemith's own instruments, so Uli was able to uh, give me a lot more information about the instrument that Hindemith had. There's some beautiful photos, I'll share them in the notes to this video, there's some beautiful beautiful photos of Hindemith and his wife Gertrude playing this sonata, but Uli was able to tell me a lot more than the photos um, uh, are able to provide in terms of information. To start off with, the instrument that Hindemith had was called a contralto Roth Corno, um, and it was made by the Italian firm Giuseppe Pelletti from Milan. Now, the Roth Corno was designed by Ferdinando Roth in the early 20th century. And again, this is a really long 19th century thing to do, to invent an instrument and call it slightly egotistically after yourself. So Roth Corno, designed by Ferdinando Roth. Of course, famously, you've got the saxophone and the sax horn, designed by Adolf Sax. And then you've got things like uh, the sudrophone, designed by Sudra. Uh, the Sarusa phone, designed by Sarus, and my personal favourite, and I have to th just carefully say this, the Bimboni phone by Bimboni. There's a really good chapter by um, 
uh, Ignaz de Kaiser, in which he talks about all these um, neologisms, the, all these instruments named after um, the maker. I'll put that also in the notes. So the Roth Corno has a lot of similarities to this instrument. Um, built in F, crookable into E flat. Um, the Roth Corno also has rotary valves like this and is forward facing like this. Um, the instrument though is much more oval in design whilst this has kind of like got this slightly rectangular format. One of the things I found really interesting about what Uli told me is that Hindemith's instrument was not a basic model. Um, Uli said it was beautifully engraved, that it has a lot of nickel silver and mother of pearl um, finishings on it, so it was obviously a very beautiful instrument. The Roth Corno has, apparently, you can play it with um, a lead pipe and a French horn style mouthpiece, or you could have a lead pipe um, and which would take a lead pipe which would take a more sax horn style of mouthpiece and that's what I do with this instrument. I'm actually playing a sax horn mouthpiece on it rather than a French horn mouthpiece. Um, but those are basically the similarities and differences between Hindemith's own Roth, uh, Roth Corno in E flat and my Althorn by uh, Dainstadt in E flat. Um, so yeah, as I say, it's quite rare to hear these pieces played on a true out horn. You hear it sometimes played on the upward facing ones um, like this, or on French horns or on alto saxophones. So we've got a German facing, German forward facing out horn in E flat. The closest thing I have to Hindemith's own Roth Corno for playing the opening movement of Hindemith's 1943 out horn sonata. Um, if you're enjoying me wittering on about the history of the wider family of horns, please like and subscribe to the channels and I hope you enjoy the Hindemith.